well, good morning. It's uh, March 20th. It's Monday. It's about minus 12, so a little bit chilly. But uh, more exciting than that, the grain buyer just messaged me this morning and he said uh, they're taking malt this week. So we got, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe 10 loads to haul in. So that'll be uh, that'll be busy. I'll probably get, I'll probably use the whole week to haul it. Maybe haul three or four loads a day or something like that until it's all done. Um, first thing I'm going to do here this morning though, that's right, is I'm going to make the bags that I got to make because it's minus 12, Carl's not plugged in, the grain vac tractor's not plugged in, uh, cause I didn't know we were going to call grain this week, but down here, my mill is plugged in like the 4440 there and the uh, telehandler's in the shop. So that'll all start right away. I'll make the bags up. I'll get some things tied up around the yard here. And then probably around noon, everything should warm up enough. I go start Carl, get him loaded. I might get one or two loads today yet. And then, uh, yeah, we'll plan to haul maybe two or three loads a day, depending on how warm it is, right? Because we're going to get into, into, into warm daytime temperatures where you got the, the snow melting. We shouldn't see mud yet this week, but... Even if it just gets too slippery, it's hard to get Carl around. You gotta hook him up and pull him around or else put tire chains on. And I'm not a big fan of tire chains, so. It's very, uh, also it's it's really exciting to get the to get the call now. So it's the end of March, March 20th. Um, I don't know exactly the window they're taking malt, probably for a week or two. So <clears throat> there's lots of time to get the grain hauled in uh, and still get everything else done. When it comes to selling grain, there's basically three reasons to sell a grain. Number one, obviously, is cash. Then number two or three, depending on, is bin space and timing. So when you, for on, on, on our farm, for instance, we, uh, we want to sell enough grain right off the bat to ensure the cash needs are met for fertilizer, seed, chemical, whatever payments we have. And then after that, we want to make sure we have enough storage for the next crop year that we don't have to dump a bunch of stuff on the ground. And then thirdly, we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're hauling at the right time. We don't like to haul in May because we don't have employees. So we do all the seeding ourselves. And if you got to hop off the tractor for four or five days and go haul grain and sit in lineups, well, there's four or five days you're not seeding. Same with harvest. So this will work out good. That's our last contract. And then we still have grain left over. It's just not contracted. So anyways, let's get things fired up and get some stuff happening. Well, we've made it back. Trip number two. And uh, going okay, I think, at this point. Waiting for the uh, fancy probe device. Well, so that's how that's done. You uh, you just wheel in here. You got a red and green light. Stop on red. Go on green. They probe each individual hopper. Our, there's two hoppers per trailer. So our Super Bs have four hoppers. <clears throat> and 
and uh, four, you know, so effectively four compartments. And they, uh, yeah, that's how they test it. Back in the day, they just you just wheeled in there with your grain truck, and they uh, opened the gate, let a bunch out, grabbed a bucket, quickly tested it, and then unloaded the rest. But with consolidation and efficiencies, I guess, now they uh, do it this way. Of course, there's a lot of mistrust, unfortunately, both on, on both sides, really. Um, some, some farmers will try to sneak some stuff in. Um, sometimes there have been claims that the grain merchant hasn't been fair. In fact, I can show you one thing right now that's kind of interesting. So if you see 10% dockage, that's uh, like, that would be unbelievable. But I, uh, I just messaged the buyer before I left because that's the other thing. You know, it's like any business where you can't, you know, you can't yell at the frontline workers because they're not, they're not going to change it, right? So anyways, on the way out, I, I just texted the buyer and I was like, is it possible that 10% dockage was a typo? And it was only about five minutes later, he messaged me back and said, yeah, absolutely, it's 1%. So, clear it up. tired now um anyways 45 bags of chicken feed bagged up so i'm gonna pull the uh my bag filling machine out of here grab this pallet stick it over in the shed and then gotta go in grab myself a shower head to bed because <clears throat> early tomorrow i got two loads of malt today i got one loaded up weird the malt market is Lately, it's, uh, you think we'd have a whole bunch of room to haul whatever I wanted to. So, I'll probably just keep hauling. I don't know if there's much point in keeping grain. The world's falling apart. So with banks shutting down and buying each other out, and I don't know, might be maybe a good time to get rid of all the grain. I don't know, we'll have to see. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you all on the next one.